In Genshin Impact, there are multiple quests that are only available when you're in a specific area or you interact with certain objects. On the stairs there, there's a stone slab that will start a quest where you have to enter these uh, three different pillars, there's some puzzles, and you're gonna get three luxurious chests. But this is, this is peanuts. This is peanuts compared to what you can get for finding all of the Geoculus and entering nine stones into the nine pillars. You're gonna see in just a second. By finding all of the Geoculus, you're gonna be able to enter this, and each time you level up the Statue of the Seven in this region, you're going to get a stone. You're gonna get nine of these stones in total, a stone of remembrance. You can see here, I'm maxing it out, I'm at level 10, I get the final stone, and it allows me to start a new quest. Head over to the QG Slope, or however the hell you pronounce that, and you're gonna find nine pillars. At the center of this, you're going to need to activate the stone pillar. The inscription there will tell you that there are nine pillars in the area. They're very obvious, they're very big, they glow uh, orange, you can see them from a mile away. You're gonna need to run up to each of them and you're going to need all nine of these stones. Climb on top and you're gonna find a face that you can interact with and use some of the stones of remembrance. This will break the seal and you need to do it to each pillar. Now, each time you activate one of these, there's going to be a chest that spawns down below. Make sure to grab that for the experience and items, but just be careful because there are some enemies that spawn near some of these, and uh, if you're running around with just like a weak adventuring team, not your main team, you might get run over. There's no trick to finding these. They're all scattered around the perimeter, so hunt them down, and once you do, a giant door is gonna open. Now, once you enter the tomb, I would honestly recommend using some buffs, some defense buffs, some attack buffs, maybe even some crit, because this is actually the hardest fight that I've done in Genshin Impact so far. I don't know if it's because my characters are were weak or what, but there were some enemies that were like 10 levels higher than me in some cases. So this is a tough little fight, but the enemies that spawn in this arena will also get empowered. There's gonna be stones that appear on the room or in the room, and they will buff the enemy and give them fire or other elements. Now you can use this to your advantage and use something like electricity to do extra overload damage, but it also buffs them and makes them quite a bit tankier, so you're going to want to break these when they spawn. They're going to be a glowing stone, you can see it there. I actually ignore it completely. It's right beside me to the left of the, uh, the screen there. Now you can use an electric attack and pretty much one bang it because you'll overload, but you can also use a claymore and other attacks and it's probably worth doing because you can see here, uh, he's buffed up, he's, he's flaming, he does more damage, is, is tankier, so you gotta be pretty careful. Uh, I'm actually doing like a, a half or even a third of the damage against this enemy when it's empowered. And it appears that there's some other enemies, some of those little hedgehog guys that roll around, Later on in the fight, multiple of them spawn in while you're dealing with the enemies. If you kill this stone, uh, I had them despawn a couple of different times, and so if you leave these stones up, it can get really hectic, and those enemies will actually run in, crush you, knock you over, and it can be very, very frustrating, especially when the final boss spawns. So when you see it spawn, uh, it could be in different areas. I'm gonna show you them right now. Make sure you shut them down. Now these first hedgehogs, they're just a regular fight. This is some of the enemies that spawn in. They're pretty annoying, especially when they get buffed up. You're going to actually have to kill these ones, but there's others that will spawn in later that are the ones that uh, kind of disappear. Now the Ruin Hunter for me when it spawned in was level 50. So I mean, this thing is tanky. You want to shoot it in the eye, uh, I'm, I'm missing it right now, I'm just trying to stay alive, I'm scared I'm gonna die. But it has a weak spot that if you shoot it, it will deactivate the enemy. But a big thing too is there's going to be these stones spawning all over around the map. You want to shut these down because there are going to be some hedgehog guys, I don't know what to call them, uh, that will spawn in until you take those out. They're going to be frustrating, they're going to be annoying, but take those out as soon as you possibly can so you can actually do some decent damage. This is one of the first fights where I actually had to buff and, and heal because I was getting stomped. Some of these stones can be a little bit annoying, but it's definitely worth going for them, even if they're covered in wind and fire. Now, again, make sure you shoot the enemy in the eye. If you can use a bow or something like that, it will weaken it and it's free range. So you can really take out this rune hunter. You can dominate it. If you've got overload and other things, that's going to be great. But make sure you're shooting that weak point when you can, because it makes the fight a pushover. Much, much easier. And there we go. Now, we're going to be getting uh, a couple of chests in this room. And it's also going to give you another part of the quest, which gives you a fantastic reward at the end. 
Make sure you open up all the chests, talk to the little thing in the middle for some backstory if you're interested. But essentially, we just uh, unleashed Pandora's box, so that's fun. We're gonna put war in the world, but Paimon here is talking about a ring. It's going to point you on the map where to go, but I have a recommendation for that at the end of the video. First, let's look at the big prize over here on the altar. This is the first five-star artifact many people are going to get. This is an amazing artifact overall for a couple of different characters, Venti being one of them. It doesn't have the best stat distribution for Venti, but the perk is overall great. It is amazing on Barbara though. If you're looking for a healer, this thing is insanity. So it's got some attack, it's got some HP and defense. It's got built-in base HP that scales up to 4,000 once you max this out at level 20. So uh, you can get a ton of HP, but also you're getting elemental burst damage and using your elemental burst will increase all party members attack by 20% for 12 seconds. If you have a way to spam abilities or you have low cooldowns, this can be incredible. Now, head back to Liyue Harbor with the ring that you got from one of the chests, and you're gonna have an option where you can get a ton of money or a ton of money and a mystery item. If you head down below, there's a woman to the left here from this, uh, this teleporter. This one gives you 200,000 mora. So if you're looking for money, this is great, but I have another option for you that I think is probably worth it because it's gonna save you some time later on if you're looking to get some great buffs for your team. If you don't care about getting an awesome food item, then don't worry about it, but this is probably not really worth it. You get a little bit of money, but the resources it requires to make the food item well makes up for it, so don't get baited into buying this one. Head down below the dock instead, and you're going to find another guy there that has a different option for you. Instead of 200,000, you get 180,000 and five mystery prize items. Now you can ask what the mystery item is, but he won't tell you, so just sell it to him. Just say sold, and you're going to save yourself four seconds of your life. And there you go, quest complete. You now have the Adeptus Temptation, which gives you a bunch of attack as well as crit rate for your party. And so this is a great pickup. Uh, it's one of the best food items in the game. If you're pushing into some hard bosses, if you're having uh, trouble beating some of them, this is a great way to get that extra boost that you might need to complete it. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more. I'm normally a Destiny content creator, but I'm really enjoying Genshin Impact, and I'm going to be covering this hard for the next month or so, before the next Destiny DLC launches. I'm currently working on a beginner guide that's going to be releasing most likely tomorrow. Then I'm working on an advanced guide because I'm about to hit level 30 on the adventure rank, and I want to give some tips to help save you some time, because it really turns into a grind once you get into the later uh, high 20s levels. I recommend this game to anyone, it's really good, it's free to play, it's awesome, but uh, I don't want you guys getting bored, <laughs> slogging away, getting no experience, right? I'm also going to be doing some character guides and reviews and different things like that, so hopefully you guys stick around, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you soon, my friends. Bye bye